This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. And welcome to the program. Thanks for joining us. I'm Roby Brock. We're glad to have you with us. We're now joined by State Senator Jim Hendren. He is the Republican from Sulphur Springs that leads the State Senate uh, in the state of Arkansas. Thanks for being with us today, Senator. We appreciate you making it into our Northwest Arkansas studio. Let's begin with our uh, with the governor's tax cut plan. $97 million uh, will benefit the top 1% of tax earners the most in here. The biggest argument has been that Arkansas is not competitive with other states and we needed to get our tax rates in line here. Is that really the argument that you hear from economic development officials or is this something that just needed to be done on paper to make us look a little bit better? Well, it's a little bit of both. We have heard that argument and I, and I think it's factual. Uh, all, all one has to do is look at the map and see how much higher our top rate is compared to every state around us and it becomes clear that uh, we're not competitive when you start talking about uh, competing with these other states for recruiting businesses. And it was also part of the long range plan to cut taxes for everybody. And over the last four years, we've cut them for middle income earners and for low income earners. And we have saved intentionally the high income earners until the end because certainly uh, they were not a priority over low and, and uh, middle income earners. So it's just a continuation of the long range plan to make Arkansas more competitive in a fair way. Uh, but we did make the high income earners wait until the end. But it is important that everybody get tax relief. And that's what this bill accomplishes. And you have pointed out that there were uh, tax cuts for those low and middle income earners in previous sessions here. But the chorus of opposition this year has been that uh, this tax cut is a tax break for the rich. At the same time, you are going to be asking for some increase in gasoline taxes as part of the governor's highway program. Um, how do you counter that argument? Because you are giving a tax break to the top 1% and you are asking the little guy to pay more in gas taxes. Well, a couple things. First is uh, people like to talk about the 1% above 456,000, but the tax break actually starts uh, at 38,000. Uh, it it uh, begins to have real impact at those over 80,000, which a family of two uh, with a couple earners making 40, 45,000 could, e could easily see and will see some savings in this. So I don't think you can just frame this as only for the rich. Uh, the other point I'd make is, you know, the the wealthy in this state have uh, been some of the biggest benefactors and helpers to our colleges, to our schools, uh, and to uh, show that we won't help them at all is asking them to leave the state. And I don't really think that's where we want to go either. Now, with regard to the gas taxes, as, as we said earlier, it's important that um, Arkansas be competitive with tax rate, but it's also important if we want to recruit businesses that we have an infrastructure that can support it. There are so many things to make Arkansas continue to thrive and to grow. Uh, workforce development and education is one of those things. Taxes are one of those things, but also certainly highways are one of those things. So without raising gas or diesel taxes, what we're going to do is ask the people of Arkansas to shoulder the entire burden of Interstate 40, which is used primarily for interstate transit from people coming across Arkansas uh, and asking them to shoulder none of the burden. So it's appropriate that we, we look at the user type, user funded method, and that's what gas and diesel taxes do. So we're, we're trying a multi-pronged approach here to make Arkansas more competitive, lower tax rates and better infrastructure. And I think it's going to pay off. All right, let's talk about that highway plan. The governor rolled out a $300 million a year tax plan. A half cent sales tax would become permanent if voted on by the voters. Uh, the regular and diesel fuel taxes that we were just talking about there. Hybrid fees for some of these uh, cars that run on electricity that uh, probably will grow in time. And some money from the general fund that's tied to uh, casino uh, revenues, we think. Is this the best plan for highways or is this the best plan that's politically possible for a highway funding? Well, best is in the eye of the beholder. I think, again, uh, best, uh, best would be an amazing highway program that costs nothing, but it's not possible. So somewhere between uh, something we can't afford and something that is uh, not going to do the job we think is the solution and I think this falls into that area. The casinos were sold to the people of Arkansas with a clear uh, marketing plan that this was going to generate some revenue for roads. So it's appropriate that that additional revenue go to roads. It's also appropriate that Arkansas show effort with regard to general fund transfer without depleting our ability to take care of the educational needs of our teachers, of our state police, of our, of our higher education, and I think this plan does that. The other thing that's not talked about a lot is the reason, in addition to making this half cent permanent, the other thing that it does is it makes it a pay-as-you-go system. 
which is going to save 20 percent as we to the system we have now with regard to how we finance our roads so think about that every time you build a fourth mile four miles of highway instead of paying another mile for uh, bonding fees you get another mile of highway because of the efficiency of the program so i think there's a lot of selling points for this to the people of arkansas the people of arkansas understand that highways are not free and i and i have got nothing but support from the folks back in northwest arkansas on a program like this so the 300 million dollar question is do you think you have the votes to pass this on the senate end oh i think so the we filed the bill yesterday afternoon it only requires 18 votes to pass and we have 22 co-sponsors so i feel this is a this is still a lift anytime you're asking a republican legislature to to pass a bill that includes some uh, hikes and fees and taxes but again the fact that we're starting out with uh, more than enough co-sponsors to pass the bill gives us a good indication that we're in a good position to pass it and i think we'll pass it next week all right let's shift our attention let's talk about uams uh, the state's uh, premier medical uh, school here is pursuing a national cancer institute designation uh, that bill i believe is uh, headed towards the governor's desk in terms of just the status but it does require 10 to 20 million dollars a year in funding uh, for that NCI designation. Where is that 10 to $20 million a year gonna come from? Those are the discussions that are ongoing and, and Senator Irvin's done and, and all the ladies that have worked so hard on this and others have done an amazing job of sh shepherding this through the legislature. And uh, I talked to them early and said, let's, let's get the enabling legislation passed, make sure that we show strong support, which we have clearly seen in the legislature and then let's figure out how to fund it. And, uh, and that's what we're working on. There's a couple different proposals out there. Clearly, vaping ta taxes on vaping, which are not taxed at all now, um, outside of regular sales tax, uh, is one that's being looked at closely. Uh, there's also the potential to look at some additional taxes on tobacco, since Arkansas is carrying a heavy load uh, with smoking-related illnesses associated to tobacco use. Uh, and the tobacco tax that is currently on the product just isn't covering the cost that the taxpayers are bearing. So. That's something that's going to be looked at. So I am confident that we will find the money. The, the, the level of support that that legislation got in the House and the Senate makes it clear that people are going to find the money. Uh, exactly where it comes from is, is we're still working on. Um, I think we're close. There's been a bill filed that, uh, that gets us about 60 to 70 percent of what's necessary. Uh, clearly, that's not enough, and we're going to continue to work. But I, I am confident we'll find the funding to do that. All right, last question for you. What else do you still have on your radar? What are some of the other big things or maybe personal things that you want to take care of in this legislature? Well, a couple things. One, another big thing clearly is transformation. That's really one of the most sweeping changes in Arkansas state government in decades. And it's going to be a bill that's over 2,000 pages. And it's uh, the state agencies committee on both the House and the Senate have been uh, scouring through that legislation week after week, and they've still got some work to do. Uh, to make sure that the legislation doesn't uh, make anything worse and does it in a responsible way. But that's going to have dramatic impact on the way state government functions. It's going to make it uh, smoother, more efficient, and over the long term it's going to save a lot of taxpayer dollars. So the transformation effort is going to continue and I think it's going to succeed uh, and it's going to be a dramatic change. Some of the other things I'm interested in is um, at this last election, Benton County was uh, one of the ones that stepped up and invested in new voting machines and voting equipment. And um, I think that is important. That's one of our core functions of state government. We still have many counties that don't have the machines that they need. Uh, some of the counties that stepped up and paid for it were not given the cost sharing that uh, perhaps they were led to believe they would get. Um, Having a secure and efficient election is something that we need to find some dollars for. So I'm, uh, I'm trying to find some dollars for that as well as uh, perhaps increasing the pay for some of our state police. Uh, right now we're some of the lowest in the country and uh, we need to do more for those who are, who are protecting us. So those are some of the things that I'm working on as we approach the end of the session, uh, which uh, will be coming up here faster than, than you might think. It's all about the budget, Senator. It's all about the budget. <laughs> it Senate. is. State Senate President Pro Tem Jim Hendren, as always, we appreciate you being with us. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Robbie. All right, we're back with more right after this word from our sponsors.